All right, and welcome to On the Bench with Big Jim. This is Jim Nielsen, and uh, thanks for tuning in. If you wouldn't mind, if you would share the video so that uh, your friends can uh, can see it as well. Um, <clears throat> you can like it as if if you'd like, but uh, if you could share it, get the word around, that'd be great. Good morning, Rick. How are you doing today? Good to see you here. Um, today we have a different kind of a show. Uh, I, um, when I, when I started on the bench with Big Jim, I wanted to be able to make it to where I could talk about other things than just sports. And so, um, uh, thus the name and thus the, the concept, but <clears throat> um, this one is a, uh, it's different in that it, it doesn't talk about, we're, we're not going to talk about much about sports, we're going to talk about some recreational activities because <clears throat> we're going to talk about the health of the water in Moses Lake. <clears throat> and uh, the quality of the local water is an important thing. And there's some studies that have come out that show that uh, the, the water quality, the health of the water, isn't where it needs to be. And so uh, uh, the Moses Lake Watershed Council was formed <clears throat> by uh, the U.S. Bureau, Bureau of Reclamation, the Washington State Department of Ecology, the Grant County Conservation District, the Grant County Health District, the Moses Lake Irrigation and Rehabilitation District, and the Moses Lake City, uh, all of those groups collaborated in developing the Moses Lake Watershed Council. And uh, they came together to explore alternatives for addressing water quality issues affecting uh, Moses Lake and the watershed around Moses Lake. And um, this is kind of an important thing because most everybody can enjoy uh, the benefit of of living in Moses Lake or on on a, in a town that has a, a, a huge uh, recreational uh, uh, tool or uh, opportunity, which is Moses Lake. Um, long time ago my wife and I we owned a boat uh, we bought a boat and the kids were young and we'd go out all the time we used the boat so we used the boat a lot and it was a great you know all my kids learned to ski and we boat we tubed and it was a great thing and then when the kids started getting older and had less time uh, we ended up getting rid of the boat but but recently my wife and I have, have purchased a uh, the stand up, um, the <laughs> paddle boards that's what they are. And uh, I have a kayak, and so my wife and I we really enjoy going to the lake. And um, um, I don't know, uh, enjoying that recreation. And a study came out last year that, um, the the uh the the bacterium in the lake it was at a level that it was not safe for people to go and and uh, and enjoy uh, using the lake so today I'm going to uh, visit with Mr. Ty Swart out who is um, he's actually from the west side but lives here in Moses Lake now and um, we're going to talk about uh, this. We're going to talk about this uh, Moses Lake watershed uh, uh, issue. There are some events coming up uh, that we want to make sure everybody knows about. May 15th, there's going to be a meeting about... Um, the health issues of the uh, lake and then uh, on May 
18th, there's going to be a carp tournament. And it's going to be a bow, uh, a bow shooting carp tournament. And <clears throat> what we'll find out from Ty today is that uh, the carp uh, contribute to the uh, the unhealthy status of the lake. And so um, once once we can uh, once we get Ty in here then we'll be able to talk to him. But anyway it's a very interesting uh, discussion and uh, Ty is very knowledgeable about these different issues and um, uh, we're, we're going to get at it uh, once uh, Mr. Swartout uh, gets checked in here in just a minute um How is everybody doing, by the way? It is Wednesday, and uh, April 17th, and we're in the middle of April already. It's just amazing how fast uh, the year is already going, and um, it's interesting. Uh, the time just does not slow down. For, for It doesn't matter what you're doing or who you are or where you're at. Uh, the time does not slow down. Hello, Doan. How are you doing? Uh, it's my friend from Arkansas. Just peeked in. And uh, it's good to see you here, buddy. Um, anyway, uh, so today's discussion is about uh, the quality of the water or the, the health issues that can... can uh, uh, good to see you, buddy. Um, I'm... I'm you, you would be a good... Uh, You'd be a good guest on this show, bud. I'll have to talk to you about that uh, sometime soon. Uh, but uh, we're waiting on uh, Mr. Ty Swartout to to pop in. And still looking for him to, to, to pop in to the show. How is everybody's week going? I'm I'm having a, this has been a weird week because my wife is back in Philadelphia, and I've been I've been a bachelor uh, this whole week, and uh, so not not my favorite week uh, to not have uh, to not having Cindy around. Um, well, I don't know what happened to him. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Mosley Lake watershed and uh, and how this council has uh, been addressing the concerns about the quality of water here in Moses Lake. And um, there's some activities that are getting that are coming up that um, that uh, also in the uh, in the post. Uh, the, the explanation about today's show is a survey that you can go to to um, uh, give your opinion about what's happening uh, uh, about or what some things that we can do um, to help with the water quality. I know a lot of people enjoy using the lake and we want it's, to it's, you know, being in a kayak, and my wife's on a stand-up paddleboard. Uh, you know, we're getting in the water. We're in contact with the water of the lake, and uh, that's kind of a uh, kind of a iffy issue when you think about it. Uh, uh, do we want to? Do we want to put ourselves at risk of enjoying uh, the recreation that the lake provides? But also, um, is it something that that uh, 
we want to risk with our health. It's important to, to have your health. That's for darn sure. Well, I don't know, folks. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, folks. I'm having to make you wait, but um, I'm, I'm gonna since, since we're waiting on uh, Ty. Uh, this is kind of an explanation of. Uh, some of the issues that are going on. Moses Lake and the surrounding watershed are susceptible to blue-green algae blooms. Bloom, blue-green algae is actually a bacterium called uh, cyanobacteria that have similar qualities to forms of algae. Some blue-green algae pr produce toxins that are harmful to humans and animals. Blooms occur in the summer when higher temperatures and elevated nutrient levels combined to create a thriving environment for blue-green algae. Whether or not blooms are toxic, they diminish the economic and recreational opportunities in Moses Lake and the surrounding region. The Moses Lake Watershed Council's goal is to assess current water quality conditions in the local watershed and explore effective locally developed solutions and uh, you can participate in the council's uh, uh, by filling out the survey and I put that link in uh, the heading of this video uh, there's also going to be a public meeting held 6 to 8 p.m. on Wednesday May 15th at the Moses Lake Civic Center uh, Council Chambers uh, located down on Balsam Street near uh, the city offices. Um, and it's a very important that uh, that uh, we get involved in this because this is something that uh, is important to m make sure uh, we can do everything that we can to make sure our uh, uh, um, we can do whatever we're, we need to, to to make our, our Moses Lake safe and uh, everyone can enjoy it um, I finally got a text back from him but I'm waiting for him to pop in so we can visit. Mm. Sorry for the delay, folks. Just be patient. Give me a second. watching the wrong video. All right, folks, uh, this is Jim Nielsen. You're watching On the Bench with Big Jim. 
and having a little difficulty getting my guest to to log in. Uh, we did our test run yesterday and everything went well, and we were able to uh, to visit. Um, just something to put on your calendar. Uh, May 15th is a public meeting. We're going to have a public meeting down at the um, Mosaic Civic Center Council Chambers, uh, 401 South Balsam Street. And that's going to be from 6 to 8 p.m. But we're, they're going to talk about uh, these issues, that uh, about the, the quality of uh, the Moselec watershed. Uh, And uh, um, I don't know what to tell you, folks. Ty Swartout is, uh, uh, he grew up on the west side. He uh, grew up coming over here to central Washington uh, to hunt and fish growing up. Three years ago, he and his wife um, uh, built a home over on the nest, northwest part of uh, the lake and uh, moved here three years ago. And uh, uh, with the quality of the, the water, the concerns thereof, uh, he's gotten involved with this uh, Mosel Lake Watershed Council and wants to make sure that, it, uh, that the lake is safe. And um, uh, he contacted me about um, talking about this subject here on uh, On, on the bench and uh, I'm gonna see if I can call him hey um, uh, did you go to my Facebook page okay uh, look for the live video that's going on right now Now, are you doing it on your phone, or are you, uh, okay. If, if you just go to my page and scroll down, it, it, it'll, uh, it'll be, should be at the top. There you are. I'm going to bring you on camera right now. So let's hang up on the phone. It's all right. All righty, folks. We're going to bring in Ty Swart out. Yes, for today. And here he is. Good morning, Thanks. Ty. How Good morning. So, not too bad. Sorry about that. I was having some technical difficulties, and that's usually me. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's not a problem. It's a, it's a common occurrence here on the bench. Um, <clears throat> So, well, hey, before uh, we go, I, I, your, your discussion about the police officer on the west side and, and everything you were saying uh, recently, I agree 100%. And uh, um, it is very sad. I come from a family of a lot of police officers and firefighters. So I, uh, 
it really uh, stings me when I see stuff like that also. Yeah, that was uh, that was our discussion on Monday's show. And yeah. um, I uh, I had just, you know, 10 days prior to that, we had uh, we had a show with uh, Officer Joey Crete, uh, Deputy Sheriff uh, uh, Joey Crete, and talking about the incident that happened in Kittitas, which is pretty close to home. Yes, and yes. Um, uh, my, uh, I don't, I, I just, it's, it, I'm befuddled in that, um, I don't know why it's getting worse and it's getting more prevalent that, uh, uh the disrespect and, uh, how people treat law enforcement, it, it's getting to the point where, um, I, I'm I'm questioning I'm questioning uh, the, the 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 quality of people that are uh, that are living in the world uh, is changing and uh, it's frustrating to say the least and um, I I don't have an answer I I uh, I I I honestly I don't have an answer and that's why I had Joey on. Uh, to see what it is we can do because um, people people just don't treat uh, people the way they should anymore and um, but I, I appreciate you making those comments about about Monday's show um, um, so uh, Ty Ward out you are a member of the Moses Lake uh, Watershed Council and uh, you're you're from the west side, but you grew up coming over here to Central Washington to hunt and fish. Growing up as a as a, a younger man, and um, tell us. And then you moved here to Moses Lake three years ago. Tell us how you got involved with this uh, the Watershed Council. All right, cool. Um, yes, I live up on um, past or north of Moses Point Golf Course, and and we have a little small HOA up here, and we. Uh, um, you know, we were seeing that the lake was getting uh, getting really bad last September, and my uh, neighbor, who's been very helpful, her name is Rose Wiseman, she actually took it on her own to go down and take a water sample because she was really concerned with uh, how it looked, and then she sent it into a lab to have them run a test on it, and then when they came back, they said, uh, yes, that, that is, you do have the toxic uh, algae in your body water, and they got in touch with uh, Grant County Health, and uh, that's when they, well, I guess they didn't shut the lake down, but they, you know, put all the warnings up around our lake and also with potholes. And so I know that there's been issues with the lake from time to time, year, you know, here, you know, for a long time. But that kind of got me involved because I just love this area. Like you mentioned earlier, I... Uh, I've been coming over here for roughly 50 years. Um, just this was my home away from home. I absolutely loved it over here. I love the way it looks. I love the lake. I love everything about it. So when we decided to uh, put a retirement place, this is where we wanted to be. And so I thought, you know what, let's kind of start seeing what, what we can do. I'm not the type of person that just sits back and, and talks about something but doesn't want to follow it up. Well, that, that's good. We need people. We need more people like that. Um, so your neighbor, she's the one that initiated the to, to get the water tested. And that that's when, because uh, I do remember when um, the warning or the advisory notice was given that uh, the lake probably wasn't at a very safe level to, to, to go out and uh, be in the lake. And we didn't we didn't use our our kayak and our uh, uh, stand up paddleboard too much last year, but I do have a friend that is a professional uh, wakeboarder, and he's always in the lake and and so it, it came to my mind that you know maybe the, maybe it's not safe to be in the lake. So anyway, once you guys realized that or found out that the the water levels or the the quality of the water was unsafe uh potentially harmful to humans and animals uh 
tell us how you got the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, water, the Washington State Department of Ecology, the Grant County Conservation District, the Health District, the MLIRD. Uh, you got all these people involved to create this council. Tell us how that came about. Well, basically, it, it um, I started just wanting to become involved. So I started reaching out to the Department of Ecology and, and started asking questions like, hey, what can we do to um, alleviate this problem? And what is there that um, me as a citizen of this beautiful country right here, what, what can I do? And I started asking some, you know, just some tough questions, I guess, and, and asking, um, you know, for feedback. And, um, you know, they started being receptive. And then I, um, I thought, well, I want to go back. I know back in like 2003, there was a very large study done on, um, on the lake itself. And it's called a TMDL, Total Mass Distribution Load, I believe it is. And um, there was a lot of, you know, testing done for a whole year. And they came up with some findings. And then um, they, they went to the implementation stage. And from that point on, uh, it, nothing really happened. And so I actually did a document request to the Department of Ecology. I just wanted to see what all was, what all happened back then, just so I was aware of, you know, why there wasn't a plan put together then. And, and so I, I went through that. And, and I guess the concern I had with going through everything is it looked like over the years, there's been lots and lots of studies done but then when the study gets completed, there's just a few things that are implemented or nothing's implemented. And then we're still back in the same issue or problem that we have. So that, that was kind of the genesis. I, we kind of got it going there. And then I attended a couple uh, meetings that were a lot of um, upper uh, levels of management of uh, Department of Ecology were attending. And I, and I just requested that, hey, uh, what can we do? And, and we got people here that are very concerned. And all of a sudden, it started taking off, and then we got uh, we got MLRD uh, joined on, and and uh, all the other organizations, and it just kind of a grassroots just started happening, and and all of a sudden they came together, and now um, they're going. I guess they're meeting this week, and all the interagencies are, and then uh, you know getting ready for our, our hopefully very well attended May fifteenth meeting. Yeah, I had mentioned that earlier uh, while we were waiting for you. May 15th at the Moses Lake uh, Civic Center Council Chambers uh, at 401 South Balsam Street uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. And it will be a public meeting discussing uh, the findings of, of the information that they have to share to the, to, to, to the, the citizens that show up, right? Now, there's also – in the link, I have a link in uh, the description of this video, uh, a survey that you guys, the Watershed Council, has put together. Tell us what this survey is, what you guys are looking for in this survey. So one of the biggest things we would like to see on the May 15th meeting is is community involvement. The, the citizens of the Moses Lake area and Potholes area to want to show up and show their support for moving this forward to to finally attacking it from a community wide perspective um, so that we don't run into those problems that we've had in the past. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people think that there's really nothing we can do, but in all the research I've done and everything, the, if you get community involvement and people uh, step up, there are a lot of things you can do to, you know, maybe not ever eradicate it 100%, but mitigate it down dramatically so that you don't have it all the time or, or even have it at all. I mean, there's, there's definitely things uh, that we can do. So showing up for that meeting and showing your support, the survey tells you about that. It asks if you would like to, uh, um, are you going to attend the meeting? Would you, if you did attend the meeting, would you like to be on a sub team or a, a committee um, to t tackle one of the issues? And then there's a, a, you know, probably the most important piece is the comment section that is in there that that you can write whatever you think about the lake, and not just Moses Lake, but potholes and and the whole water system around here of of what you think. You know, any idea we want to hear about it, just, hey, how, how can we help? How can you help? But 
I guess the biggest thing to get across to people is we just really want community support. We would, you know, my ultimate goal is I would love to see 300 people show up at that meeting on May 15th and, and really in a positive force. I mean, I, this is all going to be a teaming type event, you know, or a teaming atmosphere. That's what I'm really pushing is, hey, let's pull everybody together. Let's get some teams. Let's, let's work as one unit because we all want the same thing. And I think that's the best way we can move forward when you come about teaming. And, and you know, I, I kind of do everything in a, in a sports matter, Jim. I, I, I was, I've been a football coach, a baseball coach. And, and so I, I look at everything in a, how can we bring together a team to win the game? And um, I think that's the only way we're going to do it with that involvement. Okay. Now, to do a little educating right now, uh, you gave me, a, a, I don't know, five or six different little things. Uh, and we're actually on the 18th of, of – uh, you know what's funny, Ty? Is Mark Sainsbury just popped on. He's watching this. Uh, just, so, <laughs> just so everybody knows, Ty, when he was in high school, he wrestled Mark Sainsbury from Moses Lake uh, uh, his senior year in high school. But that, that's kind of – he just popped on. That's really, really crazy. Oh. Um, but that anyway, was my last uh, match ever, so. <laughs> uh, um, so uh, – Going back to um, uh, what we were talking about, there are oh, some May 18th. Th th yeah, on the 18th, we're having a carp shooting uh, tournament, a carp tournament on the 18th of, of, uh, of May. Tell us what the carp, the population of carp, do to the health of the water here in Moses Lake. Okay, you're right. Yeah, carp are, are very destructive to any water system there they are, especially the more or the larger numbers that are in a body of water. They and we all know if you spend time on Moses Lake, you see carp jumping and and um and moving through the brush or the reeds. And I mean you see them all over the place. And they're very destructive in the fact that they down they go down and they root around all the, the um vegetation. Um, and that does two things. It actually kills the vegetation or actually pulls it out or, you know, releases it. So you're losing some of your vegetation that in turn helps clean up some of the phosphates and nutrients just by absorbing it. And then they also, the, the bad sediment, the stuff that might be on the bottom of the lake that, you know, that kind of falls through the water column. Um, it falls to the bottom of the lake. And then here are the carp. They're in there and they're rooting around and they're, they're, uh, you know, fanning or when they're spawning and, and all that bad stuff just gets pushed back up into the water column again. So if anybody's been out in our lake, like, uh, you know, first part of June, uh, just, uh, you just, you just pop, um, uh, 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 Ty, Ty, you just pause for just a second. And so. We, we're losing you. Stick with me. Stick with me. Stay with me until you unfreeze. Because uh, you're, you're uh, oh, hold on. How's hold that? On, Ty. Hold, Ty, you, 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 you froze for a second. I want you to go back, and I want you to explain uh, about uh, in June, in the first part of June, uh, you're talking about the carp. What what did we see? What do we see then? Yeah. Okay. So th what happens is is when they start spawning, they go into the shallows. And if again, if you've been on the lake that time, you'll start seeing the reeds and all the stuff just being thrashed around. Well, that's the carp in there spawning. And so they again, when they're doing that, they're also taking the bad stuff, the phosphates and the nutrients that are on the bottom of the lake. And they're pushing all that back up. And that's when you see the water really get off color. And that's part of the reason because we have so many carp in this lake that, that they, they just push all that bad stuff back up. And that's why all of a sudden the water starts looking really brown or really green and brown. And, and, and so, again, they're, they're just a very, uh, uh, very destructive. And then the other thing they do is be, during their spawn, they are so aggressive in their spawning some of them die, and then they die in the lake. I'm sure if you're on the lake, you've seen them floating around, and, and yeah. you know. And um, they, they, 
and that, that adds nutrients and stuff, phosphates to the water too. So um, there's a lot of different ways that they really uh, affect the water. And so that's why on May 18th, we're hosting this carp bow fishing tournament. We're working with Washington and Bow Fishing Association. Um, we wanted to get an event going right away to get this, uh, you know, really get the, the, uh, some activities happening to try to help the lake. And, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be, I think that we're going to blast off about 7. I think registration's at 5.30. And it's going to be a full-day event for the, for the bow fishermen. And we are, uh, you know, we're looking out for people in the community that might want to give some raffle prizes and, and stuff like that. And, and we're trying to really get some uh, decent prize money for these folks to win. And, and they can go out in talking with Lucky Smith of uh, the Washington Bowfish Association. He said, if we have good weather and we get a, you know, a pretty decent turnout, which he thinks we will with what we're offering as prizes, they could maybe get 6,000 uh, a carp out of the tournament in one day. Now that's a lot of fish. Now in regards to this lake, that's just a, a small amount of them, but it's a start, you know, and that's what we, and we hope to have this tournament every year. So, but this is something that can have a long lasting positive effect on the health of the water uh, by, because I mean, most everybody thinks that the carp is a trash fish and, uh, and it's more than that. It's, it's, it, because of the, the negative effect it, it has on the, the water quality. Oh yeah, well, and, and another big thing to, to deal with here is I know people in, in this community and people come from outside the community to, to fish. I mean, fishing for walleye, bass, crappie, bluegill, perch. Well, the, th the other thing to do is, is a body of water can only handle so many fish, regardless of what they do. You know, they're, they're, the, the mass, what do they call Body mass index for a lake. There's only a certain amount of poundage of fish that each lake can handle. Well, if you have an overabundance of carp in, uh, in, the, in the lake, that means there's gonna be less of all the other game fish that we love to catch and eat and, and play back. I mean, it, and if for anybody that's, that's seen, you know, I, I fished it back in the 60s and 70s. I mean, you used to be able to catch crappie and bluegill by the bucket loads. Um, and, you know, they, that's, uh, I don't think we come anywhere close to that anymore. I'm not saying that's all because of, of carp, but it is a big issue with it. And, and so, um, the, you know, for every, let's say every, if we got 6,000 carp out of the lake that one day and they're all five pounds, I mean, that's 30 pounds of possibility of other game fish that could now move in and take up that, that uh, body mass in the lake. So um, that's another part of it that we really want to do. And real quick, Jim, one of the things I want to say around this tournament, we're working with uh, a, a farming group that's going to bring a trailer there that's going to take away all the fish, and they're going to use it for uh, uh, fertilizer for farming. They're going to grind it up and do that. We also have uh, some... Uh, uh, a, a person that uh, runs a commercial, uh, a commercial uh, crawdad fishing company, and he's going to take some of the fish. And then MLIRD has is said they will bring a a uh, dumpster down there for any residual carp that we need to move. They'll be able to throw it in there, and so that also means on that Sunday. Even though we're not going to have a tournament, anybody that wanted to go out and fun shoot, like a lot of these guys do, guys and gals, um, they can they have a place to deposit the carp when they're done shooting them because we don't want oh, them to go okay. back into the lake. Sure, because that's uh, if you leave them in the lake, that just uh, they decay and that cr causes another problem with the water quality. So um, now, yeah, that's a whole other issue. Yeah, some of the other things that you talked about was. Uh, fertilizer that's uh that uh is used around the lake that ends up in the lake and then uh things like uh uh older or uh you know uh septic tanks that that, that uh, are not properly functioning and then also you have uh cattle that uh that uh, their you know their defecations end up in the lake T tell us what what are some of the things that you know what can be done about that stuff well, I think the main thing with, with all that is education. 
um, you know, getting the word out. I know MLRD and Grant County Conservation, I know they try to get the word out. They have a lot of information on their, their websites, but you know, not everybody goes online, not everybody sees that information. And so we're hoping that once this team really gets rolling, that we'll be able to go out and maybe do some things in the community, maybe go to certain households and, and help them out. Um, you know, let them know that, you know, they might not think that what they're doing is hurting anything when really it can, especially like if you have, you know, 10 cows that stand in the lake and, and do what they do, um, that's a lot of stuff entering the lake, uh, you know, every day. So, um, you know, something we can do with, you know, ma uh, the malfunctioning septic systems, you know, there's issues with that, with just, you know, helping people educate them on what can happen there. And then the other thing is I know there are people in Moses Lake that that have a, a septic, they're still using a septic system, even though they have a, a sewer line running down the middle of the road. Um, but the problem with hooking into the sewer line is the cost. And so I've been really pushing these folks to say, hey, let's make this, why do we charge people so much to hook up to the sewer? It should be something really easy and be cost you know, shouldn't be a big cost because we want it to happen. And so that's something we would like to see, um, you know, fertilizer use around the lake. Uh, that This is mainly more for uh, people, you know, people like me that live on the lake and if they have a lawn and you're, you're fertilizing or over fertilizing, at some point that fertilizer gets into the, the water at some point. So that that's kind of the basis of that. One last thing about the tournament, Jim, or the May 18th tournament. Another thing, I'm not a bow fisherman. I'm not, I don't do that, but I'm a bass fisherman. And, and I'm going to, uh, we're asking people that would like to come out and help on that day. We're going to go out in our boats and those dead fish we were talking about, the ones that are floating around that are nasty looking and smell really bad. We're going to try to clean as many of those up also as part of the, uh, this tournament and do our part during it and, and uh, you know, go help out the communities like down in the Laguna and some of those areas where the carp go into spawn and then they die and then you start dealing with the rotting fish condition. So right. I'm, trying to pull, I'm trying to pull as many people that just want to go out for the day, have a good time. Maybe, you know, we've got a location to dump all those fish also, you know, with the, the dumpsters and, and what they have going out the park. So we're hoping that we can do, you know, they'll, we'll get, they'll get the live ones and then the dead ones that are floating, we'll try to clean as many of those up as we can. That, that, that'll that be good. Um, one other thing that I wanted you to explain is uh, uh, the fish hatcheries. You have a couple fish hatcheries that end up uh, uh, feeding the lake or they water from the fish hatcheries ends up, two of them end up into a uh, rocky ford and uh, one ends up in Crab Creek. Can you explain to us about the fish hatcheries and what that has effect? Yeah, no, no, you know, we all love fish hatcheries. We all love the fact that they were able to provide fishing opportunities for, for folks. Um, but there is some education that needs to be done there. And, and the, when it comes to fish hatcheries, we just want to make sure that they're doing everything they can to uh, you know, protect our lake, protect the rivers that, that they use because both of the, or actually all three of these uh, fish hatcheries that feed here, they, they pull water out of the ground, they're spring fed. They come up the ground, they go through the fish hatcheries and then they leave the fish hatcheries and then they go down Crab Creek or Rocky Ford and they come directly into our uh, water system here, our, our lake. Uh, there's another fish hatchery over in Quincy that's on the Winchester Raceway that goes directly into uh, uh, potholes. So uh, potholes actually have four fish hatcheries that, in theory, are feeding water to it. Now, the issue with, with you know, the fish hatcheries is, you know, they, they feed their fish a large amount of food. And um, some of that food doesn't get eaten and washes through the creek or washes into the creek and then could raise phosphate levels. Then there's the, you know, just the, the normal fish uh, defecation, or I guess I'd say is, you know, is what they do in the water. And that could wash into the creek. And so the idea is just, hey, making sure that, that you know, everybody in this community is doing their part. Everybody, uh, uh, 
you know, that they understand that maybe if, if they can do just a little bit more, maybe it helps. I mean, none of these issues we're talking about are, are if we eradicate one, it's going to take care of the whole lake. It's something we got to try to do for all these and, and try to um, follow it so that we, you know, we minimize. If we can minimize 50%, then I think we've done a really great job because it would, uh, you know, decrease the levels of, of the phosphates and it would decrease the chance of that algae. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I obviously you're going to be going off memory. Uh, what are, what's like a safe level measurement that, uh, that tells you your lake, uh, your, your water is a, a safe level to, uh, have activities in? Well, I know that back in, um, in 2003, when they did that TMDL, they, um, they had come to an agreement that they would like to keep the lake uh, for their phosphates under uh, 50 milligrams per million or, or liter. I can't remember exactly what that is, but it, but 50 was a number. Now 50 isn't necessarily a great number, but it was a number because of the, the shallow lake and what we have here is, um, you know, they, they thought, okay, that's an attainable number. They wanted to reach something that's going to clean up the lake. That's not going to, uh, we probably wouldn't have the toxic algae or very minimal amounts of it. And um, so I, I am always working towards that 50 number. Now, that being said, if you go, uh, oh, go ahead, Jim. Well, I was just going to ask, what was the number uh, that the your neighbor uh, when she took the, the sample to get tested, what was the number when she, uh, this last fall? Okay, or so, last, or, so was it last summer? Yeah, it was last summer. So two different things. Um, there's two different levels. There's the phosphate, which is the, the, the nutrients and stuff that feed the algae, and then there's the algae. Well, the algae, I think anything above a six is of concern, and it was in the hundreds when with for the algae for the toxic algae it was it was very bad okay and that, they continued to, to continue to go up okay so and that's that's the point that i wanted to make right now is that we've talked about some of the different things that uh can have an effect on the the quality water quality in in our lake uh i want i want people to understand what a a, a safe level of the the algae was and then what it was tested last summer and so um we're well over a safe level of uh of you know for humans and, and animals to to be using the lake as a recreational tool hopefully the efforts that the, the council is taking and uh you know educating people uh having people know about this uh the survey and getting feedback from them and then having a lot of people show up for the meeting in May, May 15th at the Moses Lake Civic Center Council Chambers located at 401 South Balsam Street. Uh, if, if we have a combination of all these things, then we can hopefully uh, get, get our, 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 the quality of the water as far as the algae is um, so that it's safer for people to, to enjoy the, the benefits of living on the lake or having a, a lake to, to, to play in. Um, and then, you know, the May 15th is the meeting. May 18th is the carp tournament. What else can people do? Oh, I, I think the main thing is just do their part, you know, and, and um, you know, do some research on their own. I, I know more about this than I ever thought I would ever imagine. I mean, I, I've read through a thousand pages of documents on the tests that have been done here. Um, I, you know, I've found out what feeds this uh, lake, you know, the different uh, water sources and, and um, you know, education and then understand that if each person does just a little bit or a little part, um, you know, it, it, it can help a lot. Like I know another issue is like, uh, you know, we got a lot of trees around the lake and, a lot, you know, just the leaves for, that are going into the lake or, or if somebody was used a, a blower and blow, oh, I'm just going to blow my leaves into the lake. Well, that, that affects the lake quality too, just by doing that, you know, and so there's, 
a lot of little things that we can do to to help and 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 so I, as far as um, you know that May fifteenth meeting, hopefully we have a great turnout, and then you know from that maybe there'll be some subcommittees that can meet, and and I don't know how often they were, but Grant County Conservation is kind of going to run that and and uh, you know kind of be the leader of that, um, and then the other thing is is we're. I know that the Department of Ecology has already allocated some funds to MLRD to help with the actual algae issue. And, um, and then they've given another $15,000 to Grant County Conservation specifically for the carp issue. So we're in, in the last like six months, now we're starting to see some state funds come our way to help again, you know, to to help improve it, which I think is great. They they the Department of Ecology is on board a hundred percent. I've had uh, four folks from the Department of Ecology at my home twice this year, just wanting to sit down and discuss the lake and you what can we can do, it. and talk about it. And and you know, if you think about four folks from the State Department of Ecology coming to your home, there there's some money invested in it because that's you know they're sending people out so. Uh, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of folks, uh, you know, that are that are willing to, to help. And, um, you know, I, I really think uh, we can get something going. One other thing, too, we we're talking about the numbers on, on the, you know, the two different numbers. I referenced a 50 number. That's for the uh, phosphate itself. Um, and then over six, I think, for the algae. And, and like I say, the algae was in the hundreds. And... Um, but the phosphates itself, the numbers they test for those, if you go on the MLIRD website, they actually have about 10 different uh, testing areas around the, the lake that they do testing once a month to get what the phosphate levels are at that time. Now, certain parts of the lake are, are under 50 or at 20 or 30 or whatever. Um, there's some parts of the lake that the number is at 200. So you're four times the amount that should, that's even acceptable. So um, something that people can go out and take a look at that MLIRD website. And uh, I think it's under projects. You can see that they, and they do it once a month and you can see the, uh, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of, of what those numbers are. And then uh, you can see, you know, at what points, why, you know, and I, I'm trying to figure out why one, Oh, excuse me, one month might be more than the other, um, but it's interesting data, at least it was for me. So, um, and, and, and that means, and what, what that means is that some parts of the lake are safer than others. Yeah, so there, there, there's a, yeah, on the, on the spots or the parts of the lake where there's not as much phosphates, there's not as much food for that algae to consume to, um, you know, to uh, to create itself and to, to reproduce. Um, you know, the thing that I haven't seen, at least recently, was the fact that um, we haven't had any fish die-offs. I'm sure there's been some in the past at some point, but that's the other thing that can happen is you can start losing a lot of fish because the other thing the algae does is other than make people sick, it also depletes the water of oxygen to where the fish suffocate. And we don't want that to happen either. So, um, you know, there's just, there's a lot of different things that can happen. There's a lot of, uh, of things that we can try to get in front of and minimize and keep those numbers down so we don't have to do it. Now, one of the other things, too, that, um, that helps dramatically, and I know there's some issues caused by it, is if we can get the Bureau of Reclamation, the Federal Bureau, to release more water in our lake, so that it flushes out the system more. It, it can, it okay. can uh, we get fresh water through the canals through Rose, from Roses, Mose, or excuse me, Roosevelt, and you know through the system. And the more water we get through, it helps flush the system out. In years that they've done that, um, it's really seemed to help it. And we're really working with uh, Bureau of Reclamation to say, hey, can we get more water? Now I've been told that. There are some issues with getting additional water through the system where it floods some folks' farmland and, and it floods maybe even an area up by the airport and there's some, some negative impacts of that. And obviously we don't want to have, you know, have any of those types of impacts too. We don't want to take one problem and make it someone else's problem. That, right, that's not yeah. what we want. 
you know, but maybe there's a happy medium in there where they don't get affected and we can run some more water. Because I, I believe every drop of clean water we get into the lake to help flush it will help. You know, along with other, all these other things that we're doing, um, I, I think every little bit would help. So that's something they're looking at. Uh, again, I, I, uh, I've talked to a couple of folks and said, hey, I live out on Crab Creek out, you know, north of Stratford or out by Stratford. And if they start running a lot more water, it can affect my farmland. And, and again, I am not for uh, doing anything, taking one problem and give it to someone else. That's not what we want, but maybe, there's a way that we can do it where everybody's happy and it, and it produces a very positive outcome. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's the, that's the hope is that we can uh, make the, the quality of water that we have here in Moses Lake uh, improved so that we can continue to enjoy it. Cause if we don't, then uh, those warnings, those advisories may turn into, Hey, you guys can't use the water. You guys can't be on the lake, and we don't want that to happen either. Yeah, oh, for sure. It's it's huge. Like last year, like I say, I'm a duck hunter, and, um, you know, I we actually had the game warden came around to every, uh, on the duck opener or the night before, and every camp spot around Moses or potholes or whatever was letting people know to be very careful about your dogs and making sure they're not drinking the water and they could be sick or die. And, and I've never, I've been hunting over here for, like I said, 50 years or whatever it is. And I've never had that happen. Wow. And, and, um, and I know of two groups of hunters that didn't come that weekend because of the algae. So, and they were, you know, and that's where it gets into the financial situation with, uh, you know, they were planning on staying at hotels, you know, they were going to buy gas in town, they were going to eat at restaurants, they were going to, you know, go to the grocery stores, you know, all that stuff. And here was like six to eight people that didn't come over because of the algae. So then you start getting into the whole, wow, it affects business. The economical effect. effect, yeah. Yeah, and, and so think about if it happened, you know, if every, you know, every year you, you know, folks are going to be affected for two months and how, how that impacts, I know, like Mardon Resort. I mean, you think about uh, end of August through September, and if, you know, if there's a warning about the lake, I mean, yeah, that could be an impact, and we don't that want be Mardon impact, to be impacted. Yeah. Yeah, that's Mordon's a beautiful too. place, and, and yeah. we don't want anybody impacted, along with all the other businesses around here. Yeah. So, well, uh, Ty, this has been uh, this has been very informative for me. I'm glad you contacted me about about doing this. Um, the Moses Lake Watershed Council. Do you guys have a Facebook page, or do you guys have some sort of way people can find out more about it? Well, they do. I, I, on that, the Grant County uh, Conservation District uh, website has all the information, has – you, 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 you pause for a second. Okay. Go ahead. Say, say that all okay. over again. Yeah, the Grant County Conservation District, they are leading this, this program right now. Um, their offices are up behind uh, Dairy Queen up there. And um, they got a team okay. that's that that's um, that's going to be leading this, and and uh, so the rest of us, uh, public folks, uh, uh, MLIRD and and Bureau of Reclamation and the Department of Ecology are kind of being pulled under Grant County Conservation because they wanted to have one leader, and they felt like they wanted to have that lead be in the town of Moses Lake, and really um, so that we can get that groundswell of support from the community, you know, Department of Ecology wants to help as much as they possibly can. Obviously they're giving money, they're doing stuff, but they don't want to run into a situation where they're telling the folks of Moses Lake what to do. We, they want the Moses City, or the citizens of Moses Lake to tell the Department of Ecology what to do. And, and gotcha. that's the way we're going. If we team up and we're all as a one team and we go to them and say, hey, here's our plan and here's what we'd like to see, they're all on board. And then I think that's a, a great way to do it so that we're not, um, you know, not the, not the thumb down on, on us. It's like we're the thumb up. We're moving forward and, and uh, we want it to happen. Cool. Awesome. Well, Ty, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, uh, good luck with, uh, I'm going to be, actually, I'm going to be out of town 
uh, my son's graduating from PA school. And so I'm going to be back in Pennsylvania and, um, uh, we're, we're, we're going to miss this weekend uh, of all this, these activities. Uh, May 15th, the uh, Moses Lake Watershed Council will have a meeting to discuss the concerns about um, what we can do as a community. And then on May 18th, there is going to be a, a bow, carp bow fishing tournament. Uh, that, and we'll, we'll post a link uh, to that here uh, uh, in, the, in the show uh, notes. So Ty Swarthout, thank you so much for your time. And I'm, you know, you're just a concerned citizen and how you're, uh, uh, as your son said, you're famous now, but I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how famous you can be uh, by just being on, on the bench with Big Jim. But thanks, thanks for coming on and being a part of the show. No, thank you for having me, Jim, and I look forward to meeting you face to face. And and oh, uh, if you yeah, could, we'll have to do that. yeah, if you could just um, uh, continue uh, advertising for that May fifteenth meeting and just letting everybody know that would we, be we, that's we yeah, that will. would be great. All we right, great. Well, hey, have a hey, have man, a great day. You, you take care. We'll see you. All right, Bye -bye. folks. That was Ty Swart out and. Uh, He's a part of the Moses Lake Watershed Council and uh, some great information there about um, the different things that are going on um, that can have an effect on the, the water quality uh, here in our lake, Moses Lake. Hey, uh, I need to thank my sponsors. And so we're going to do that now. Um, I, uh, I appreciate, uh, sponsors willing to be a part of what we're doing. And, uh, they were, uh, willing to, to help out in, uh, Uh, helping me bring this show to you. Jay's Teriyaki Grill is delicious noodles, fantastic teriyaki, and crazy huge portions, making this the best bang for your buck in the area. You can't go wrong by stopping at Jay's Teriyaki Grill for lunch or dinner, whether you eat in or pick it up and take it home or back to work. Go try it for yourself on the corner of Alder and Broadway at 123 East Broadway Avenue. Call 509-764-5155, Jay's Teriyaki Grill, and tell them Big Jim sent you. Uh, that uh, that uh, my good friend JJ down there at Jay's Teriyaki, um, want to tell him thank you very much and appreciate him for uh, uh, being a part of sponsoring the show. Um, my next sponsor is um, Tesis Merchant Solutions. Uh, for those of you who uh, use credit cards to process uh, payments for your business, if you're tired of uh, getting the runaround or not getting the service, uh, Central Payment is now Tesis Merchant Solutions. Nothing, But nothing has changed. Free equipment and the lowest processing costs and local customer service. If you're looking to improve your bottom line, Check your statement and let's see what fees you're getting charged. We can customize your processing costs and provide you with the best customer service and free equipment. Tesis Merchant Solutions wants to partner with you to make your business successful. Call 509-750-5676 for a free analysis. Um, that is a, a business that I um, run here in uh, Moses Lake. And uh, it, um, I'm the only locally uh, run uh, merchant service business here in the Columbia Basin uh, because nobody else wants to live here. Uh, they want to take your money and not provide you good co local customer service. Uh, and uh, uh, so give, give me a call and we'll see if we can help you out. 
Our next uh, sponsor is Frederick Frederick's Jewelers. Frederick's Jewelry. Uh, at Frederick's Jewelry, they provide custom designed jewelry and expert jewelry, jewelry repair. Not only do they sell and repair jewelry, they also sell beautiful and fine gifts from glassware, vases, vials, to gold watches and silver watches and ceramic sculptures. With over 60 years of being in the business, they're the ones you can trust with jewelry, watch repair, and fine gifts. Serving Moses Lake since 1953, Frederick's Jewelry, 208 West 3rd Avenue, here in Moses Lake, 509-765-6331. Also see what's happening on their Facebook page at Frederick's Jewelry ML. And um, uh, Nick and I grew up together. Nick uh, went to school here uh, growing up. So go see Nick at uh, Frederick's Jewelry, and uh, he'll take care of you. Um, and then our last sponsor is uh, Boost Mobile. And Boost Mobile is a, a local uh, cell phone company that provides... Uh, uh, Boost Mobile is where you can get four lines of unlimited gigs when you switch to Boost Mobile, including mobile hotspot per line, available in-store or online. Uh, go to their website, uh, www.boostmobile.com, and go see the great people at Boost Mobile, 301 East Broadway, Suite C, here in Moses Lake, or call them at 509-765-4298. Store hours are Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 7 p.m., and on Sundays, noon to 5 p.m. Uh, it's where you can get the best in uh, uh, your cell phone service. Um, I wanted to thank again everybody uh, for watching today and for my guest, Ty Swartout. Uh, again, May 15th is the date of the community meeting down at the Moses Lake Civic Center Council Chambers. And uh, and then the CARP tournament is at Connolly Park on May 18th. 5.30 registration, 7 o'clock start. Uh, and we'll put uh, some information about that here on uh, the page. Again, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, being patient uh, with um, the start of the show, we had some technical difficulties. Um, we will see you again all on Friday and, uh, hope you all have a great Wednesday. Take care, everybody. We will see you. I think that's it. We'll see you. Um, uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a good one.